Hi, Jonathan Marks here with Julie Schweitzer, Ph.D. She's the director of the Attention, Impulsivity, and Regulation Program at the UC Davis Mind Institute. She's also a professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences, and she's the director of the UC Davis Schools of Health Mentoring Academy. She's going to be speaking at the seventh annual meeting of APSART, the American Professional Society of ADHD and Related Disorders, this coming January 15th to 17th, 2016, at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel in Washington, D.C. The title of her talk is, Can Brain Training and Computer Strategies Modify ADHD Symptoms? This sounds fascinating, Julie. Can you give us an overview? Sure. What we'll be talking about is our potential to use computer technology to improve outcomes for ADHD, and I'll present a review of some of our findings from our own laboratory, as well as other laboratories in which people use basic learning approaches, including cognitive training, to address symptoms of ADHD. And we'll also be talking about one of our studies where we've looked at addressing ADHD symptoms in children with autism. And are these computer programs, are they custom computer programs for this, or are they off-the-shelf programs for other purposes? The ones that we're talking about that we collected in our laboratory are off-the-shelf programs that we've worked with a company with, but I'll be reviewing other programs that are more specific to other projects, as well as I said earlier, the, the potential that we might have to use computer technologies. Some of this is not necessarily ones that have already been developed, but I think how we could potentially use computer technology to improve outcomes. Some of this really will be looking to the future. I want people to understand that we recognize that cognitive training is an area that had a lot of controversy about it and we're fully aware of it so part of my talk will be talking about how we see potential but there's some weaknesses and how we can use what we've learned in the past to help us think about future directions and how we can also use what we understand about ADHD to better inform technology and just in general treatment for ADHD. One point to make is that so many of us were really interested in looking at these computerized and cognitive training programs because these are some of the first approaches where treatment was informed by neuroscience findings. And that has not been very commonly done in ADHD or in psychiatry in general. I think in the future when people are so interested in, in precision treatments and what the potential is, again, to use neuroscience findings so we can talk about how and think about how we can use what data we have to inform directions for future treatments. And can you give us a peek into what some of these modification of symptoms are? Sure. The area that's been looked at most closely has been general attention. And I'll be talking about that. Many of the programs have focused specifically on working memory and about how you might approach working memory training to then work on a broader base. But some of also what I'll be talking about is how some of the outcome measures we've been using may not have been the optimal outcome measures. We have outcome measures that we typically select for psychopharm studies, but that might be very different from what one would do when looking at other symptoms and how maybe we need to be looking at a narrower set of symptoms when we're designing some of these interventions. And so that's somewhat of a new approach, I think, rather than looking at global symptoms, which is typically what's done in the, in the psychopharmacology approach. You mentioned earlier that cognitive behavioral training has some controversy around it. I thought I had heard that cognitive behavioral training is one of the more successful modes for treating ADHD that is a non-pharma approach. I think that's an optimistic perspective. I think we've had some findings that I'll talk about that are very positive, but I want to make sure people attend the meeting and can listen right there and then. There's hits and misses, and the number one issue with all of these interventions is generalization, and that has to do with any non-pharmacological approach. Pharmacological approaches tend to be the broadest, but on the other hand, um, they don't also necessarily address all symptoms, and that has been the major issue is whether or not these treatments that are uh, not pharmacological will generalize. Many of these non-pharmacological treatments haven't been designed for generalization. So that's some of the controversy that I'll talk about. Got it. So you have to be there at the annual meeting of APSARD, that's the American Professional Society of ADHD and Related Disorders, this coming January in Washington, D.C. You'll hear Julie Schweitzer, Ph.D., talk about this subject, as well as many other very experienced individuals who are experts in this area. Thanks so much for being with us, Julie. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Looking forward to the meeting.